friends. This episode is all about drogue steering. I want to make this episode right on the tail end of the passage video so that anyone that saw how I dealt with that situation um, and wants to know more about it, this is the video that explains what worked for me, what my setup was, and hopefully you can take elements of this and, and create a uh, emergency steering setup for your vessel, whether it be a sailboat or a powerboat. I've made like a emergency steering using a drogue manual uh, that's a PDF for free download. You can find that in the description down below. Uh, hopefully everyone downloads that and like prints out a copy, throw it in your chart table so that if the time ever comes and you're out at sea and something goes crazy, you'll be able to just quickly reference that. I've tried to make it as simple as possible and um, I laid out, you know, what I used, and I had to use stuff on the fly. Luckily, I had all the gear on board for other reasons uh, and was able to put together this system. Let's start first with what a sea drogue is. Um, they also can be called sea anchors. They're basically the same thing. The main thing is that it depends on where it's attached to your boat. So if you attach it to your bow or on your beam, then it's generally called a sea anchor. And if it's attached to your stern, then it's called a drogue. A lot of fishermen use them when they're working. Um, they'll hook them on the beam so that they're drifting down, which makes for pretty gnarly motion on the boat. But that allows them to work and fish and um, not make too much way while they're getting their work done. So drogues are primarily used on sailboats to prevent dangerous surfing down wave faces. And I'm talking huge wave faces like Southern Ocean huge. Um, when, you know, you would be flying down the face of a wave, you overtake the next wave and you pitch pole and just catastrophic. Um, so generally you would have a very long line. Your drug would be one or two wave sets away from you. And this would really slow your process down these wave faces and help you control the boat. So let's talk about how you can use a drug or a sea anchor, um, to steer your boat when you lose steering. And there's any number of ways you can lose steering. I lost steering because of uh, striking a submerged object which damaged my rudder and led to the ultimate failure of my rudder. Um, you could, maybe you have linkage in your wheel steering that fails and you don't have spares or, or it failed in a way that your, your spares can't help you. Um, or if you have a hydraulic system, maybe like on a power boat and your hydraulic system fails. So there's a lot of ways that you can find yourself in this situation. And you might be close to shore or you might be far offshore. Either way, um, if you can make way, whether with sail or with motor, then you're going to be able to steer with this drogue in a limited capacity, but you will be able to get yourself close enough in that you can get help. The easiest way for me to describe how a drogue works is I like to say if you imagine someone canoeing or in a kayak and they put their paddle down, in the water and, and turn it sideways and it creates that resistance and then the front of the canoe or kayak turns in that direction. That's exactly what the drogue does on a much larger scale. And the closer you can get it to the boat, the more it's going to turn. If you bring it all the way right on your beam, your boat's going to turn about and sail the other way. So that's all it is. It's, it's really that simple. The trick is keeping the drogue underwater and having the control lines so that you can easily move it from one side of the boat to the other as your conditions change, as the wind changes, the sea state, you name it. And it, it is, and my buddy Noah, when, when he was helping me work this out through text messages on Iridium Go, he was like, he was like, it's a very fiddly thing. And that's the per perfect description because it, it took me, three hours to get it to work at all and I was like this is hopeless I was losing my mind and um, finally like with the coaching of my shore team um, of David Stovall Captain David Stovall and Captain Noah Pepper those dudes like talked me through the process and um, it's the only reason I was able to save my boat um, so I'm forever in their debt and the funny thing is once you get it worked out I'm, you're like why was that so difficult <laughs> but you just have to have certain elements in play for it to really work and be effective. And, and those things are going to change based on, on your vessel, based on your sea state, and based on your point of sail 
um, if you're on a sailboat. I was lucky in the sense that I was running downwind and down seas, and I think that it would be much more difficult if I was trying to beat, but I still believe that it would work. It just, your progress might change depending on the sort of forces that you're dealing with and the size of your drogue. Okay, let's talk about the setup that I did for SV Tritea. I took my 10 foot long spinnaker pole and I lashed it aft across the stern pulpit. Then I took the two longest lines I had on board, which were spinnaker sheets. Um, and thankfully they were really nice. They were Dyneema cord um, with a cover. And um, I think that kind of saved me in a lot of ways because they chafed in many places, but that Dyneema held true the whole time. So you have, your, you have two long sheets um, and they don't need to be as long as a traditional drogue. Like a traditional drogue, you might want it 100 feet behind your boat. But with this setup, you, I actually found that you want it not that far off. Like, I mean, I think I the furthest it was ever aft of my transom was maybe 15 feet. Like, you want to be able to see it, and you want to be able to pull it close in. So there's no reason to have a 100 feet line behind because you're not going to get the same sort of maneuverability if it's too far aft. So with the steering setup, you definitely want, you know, I found on my 30 foot boat that the 60 foot lines were kind of perfect. Um, so I ran those from the cockpit to uh, snatch blocks, which I had uh, athwart ships. So right in the middle of the beam um, on the jib rail and then aft through the end of the eye of the spinnaker pole and then continued aft and tied with a bullion to the end of my drogue. Um, did that on both sides and um, I did have the spinnaker sheets around the winch once just as a slight mechanical advantage but I found I never needed to actually crank the winch I pulled it in by hand um, and uh, but maybe it did give me a, a bit of advantage. A lot of that tuning stuff we'll talk about later. So we got our spinnaker pole lashed which is acting as an outrigger. We got our lines running from the cockpit forward to the middle of the boat and then back to the drogue. Um, and when I first started that was that was exactly the setup. I deployed the drogue, tuned it, tuned it. I had 90% of my head sail out and I had a triple reef main up. And again, I was running almost dead downwind with following seas. And I could not, I could not get it to find a course. I could not get it, you know, on the wind or anything. Like once I got the wind on the beam, the boat would take off and just, just run off and ignore the drove. And then otherwise it was like the seas were throwing me around back winning my head sail. So I could not, at first I could not get it to work. So since it wasn't working, I tried to do it without being through the eyes of the spinnaker pole. Um, I reached out, unhooked it. Once the lines were in the water, one of them went directly under the steering oar for my self-steering wind vane and threatened to like rip it off with the next wave surge. And it, it was very scary. I was like, I can't lose that entire bit of gear as well. So I dove half over the boat, got it free and immediately put it back on the outriggers. So I actually believe that the system would have worked better more effective without the spinnaker pole, but I had to have that spinnaker pole to keep the lines off of my wind vane self-steering system. And that's a good example as to how this system is gonna vary. If you don't have one of those, then you might be better off just running it to blocks and you don't even have to deal with the pole, um, which also prevents a lot of the chafe that I ended up dealing with later on. So that's something to know. And also on a power boat, you know, it's gonna be different as well. So once I got it back in, I'm fighting it, I'm fighting it, and I'm messaging with my team and um, I couldn't receive like images or links I couldn't there was no access to the internet all I had was simple text messaging ability on my phone with Iridium Go and um, Captain David Stovall said he was looking at a bunch of different ways people set it up online and he said some people add a weight or chain to their drogue to help keep it underwater so I dug around and found a slotted dive weight that you use for like a dive belt and tied that off to a line added that to the um, drogue and um, at the same time Captain Noah Peffer had told me he was like if you're sailing downwind you can't have your main up he was like you have to just be running with your head so alone and he said he was like the key to making the system work is having those sails powered up and balanced as best as you can because if you're not creating forward motion the drogue's not going to steer you 
So, and I had been hesitant to drop the main because I knew that the boat motion was just going to be so brutal. Um, but I was like, you know, nothing else is working. So I dropped that main, lashed it down, and like that, the boat found course. So with that combination of the weight, which was absolutely needed to keep that drogue underwater because it was kind of just skipping on the top and not creating enough resistance, combined with getting that main out of the equation, because what happened was like the main was blocking the wind anytime the, the waves would like make the boat do this, you know, it was like steering me all over. So the head sail would backwind, it could never stay full. And the other problem was like with the main, even triple reefed up, if I got just a little bit on the wind, the boat took off and then there was like no bringing it back because it overpowered the drogue. So the main created too much power for the little drogue to handle and I had to sail for 18 days, 1,000 miles with just my head sole, which was very unusual. <laughs> um, but, and so, yeah, once once those two things got into play in the system, it just found course, and like instantly. And um, I just sat there with it for like an hour and a half before I even texted my shore team or anything. I was just like, I was like, I wanna make sure that it's actually holding course and it's not a fluke that it just happened to fall in line. but. And from that moment on, I had full control of the boat. It took me probably three days of like not carrying a lot of sail to really learn how to use the system. Because what would happen is I would pay out too much sail and specific amount of wind, which would overpower the drogue, and it would try to run off. Um, so it took me a couple days to really know how to kind of fine tune it. And um, once I got it dialed in though, um, I was making three and a half knots was my average speed. And before that, the average kind of speed was like four and a half knots. So I only lost a knot of speed with no rudder. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and I may have made a lot more speed once I, cause I had just gotten into the trades when this happened. So, you know, I may have been averaging five and a half knots if I had the ability to like run wing and wing with my, my full main up and my full head sole out. Um, I have no idea, <laughs> um, but the fact that I was able to, to maintain like a, an average speed of three and a half knots with no rudder, I was pretty happy with that. Um, another thing to note is um, a lot of this, my success in being able to hold a really straight course may have been to do with the fact that I had a self-steering wind vane with an auxiliary rudder. So that means that my wind vane did not rely on the primary rudder, which is the case with 90% of self-steering wind vanes out there. They use your main rudder. So that would have been totally useless had I had one on board and the rudder failed. My wind vane is very problematic. And if you've ever read Log from the Sea of Cortez from Steinbeck, um, the outboard in that book is called the Sea Cow. I've been calling my wind vane the Sea Cow because it it gave me a lot of trouble and it slowly started failing with its internal mechanisms shortly after that but um she she you know she managed to squeak me through and i only had to hand steer the last six hours of the patches so she held on right to the last minute but um again i, I don't know i think running downwind it would be okay with the drug but coming close in um i definitely needed that auxiliary rudder system saved me because i had to I had to come down the channel and then anchor at Waikiki because um, there was no one to tow me. So I'm a big believer in auxiliary rudder system wind vanes. And the best one in the world currently is the Hydra vane. Um, if I could afford one, that's all I would have on my boat. They're very expensive, but if you're doing serious ocean sailing um, and you can afford to add it to your boat, absolutely. Hydra vane would be the only way to go. Now, another thing I'll, I'll point out is if you're on a sailboat and you do have the wind vane self-steering system, I found, it took me a week or so to figure this out, but I was I was trying to do small adjustments, when I would get off course, I would try to do small adjustments to my wind vane and then also adjust my drogue. And that would just like, once you kind of get out of your track, then it would take me like an hour or two hours to like get it back on a good course to where she wasn't doing silly stuff. So. Soon I found out that once the winds were pretty constant in their direction because they're the trade winds, I found that I just wouldn't touch the wind vane unless the wind clocked or backed dramatically. But if it was just a squall, 
that was gonna, even if it was a squall that was like lasted for a couple hours, I wouldn't touch the wind vane at all. I would just leave it on its setting and just address the ad, adjust the drogue, you know, hard to port, hard to starboard, or dead astern. And I found that that's all I actually needed to keep the boat on course and on the wind. And then only when there was like a dramatic shift um, would you would you have to adjust the wind vane itself. You bring too many elements into play and too many changes, um, then then you kind of hose yourself with that. Next thing we're going to talk about is chafe. <clears throat> um, if you're able to set up this system beforehand, definitely get like an anchor swivel that you would attach to your drug, whichever drug or sea anchor that you're going with. Um, and generally, I when I say sea anchor, sea anchor, I'm thinking of like the um, the cloth fabric ones, which you can get these like cloth um, little cone sea anchors. You can get those for under a hundred dollars, like you know, at kind of any big fishing supply store. I think like Bass Shop Pro sells them. Just get one that's that's like rated for the size of your vessel. I will for sure be getting one as a backup to my rigid drug. So my drug is hard plastic rigid called a sea squid. Um, it's very hard to stow, but I was very happy I had it. And uh, mine has an eye hook on the top that has been welded so that those forces can't open up that eye hook and you don't lose the drogue. Um, I still had like a trip line tied aft, um, which helps you like you can pull it. It pulls the drogue backwards, which frees that resistance and it's easier to pull on board. But it's also just like a, a triple safety so that you don't lose it because that's your only hope, you know. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that like a Jordan series drug would be the ideal thing for steering. Um, if that's what you have, then that's, how, that's what you have. But the thing you have to think about with like drogue steering versus like a traditional, how you traditionally use a drogue is that you want to create resistance to steer the boat, but you also don't want to slow your progress so much that it's keeping you in a dangerous situation longer than you have to be. So, because for a while at sea, I was like, oh man, maybe this joke's too small. Um, and uh, the more I sailed with it, the more I realized like, well, you know, the bigger the drogue, the slower you're gonna go. So, and, and the other thing is like, between like a larger drogue and also like, I had a four pound weight on my drogue and I, and I considered putting my 10 pound mushroom anchor on it and didn't. I was like, I'm gonna try the four pound first. I think the four pound, between four four to six pounds for my drug was the way to go. Because what happens is as the winds die, the heavier the weight is, it's just gonna sink and then it's not gonna, you're, you're gonna get less and less action with lighter winds. And um, for my setup, once the winds went below nine knots, it pretty much did nothing. I was just kind of pushed around by the seas and um, it did very little. So you have to have that forward motion to, um, to be able to steer the boat with the drogue set up. Now, if you don't have a sea anchor or you don't have a drogue, you don't have the fabric kind, the hard kind like I have, or Jordan series drogue, <clears throat> you can improvise with a bucket. Um, but I honestly don't know. I guess it depends on how far you are from land. I don't know how long a bucket could withstand the forces that it's put under for a long period. Um, and also how you would tie off the bucket. It would be a little trickier, I think. My backup plan, if my drug was lost, was I was going to use, I have a really heavy duty mesh bag for all my scuba gear. That would have worked as a drug. I could have like cut holes in part of it and tied like a ton of like, kind of like a big, like bridle of rope around it. Um, so that for sure would have worked. But again, I don't know how long it would have lasted. I don't know that, I don't think it would have lasted 18 days. Um, so for me, I was lucky that I had a really serious, rigid, strong drug. Uh, and if you don't have any of that stuff, you can always tie like, any rope you have on your boat. You could tie a bunch of knots in it and create like warps or just like a big ball of knots that you tie on the end and just kind of everything you got. And as long as you're able to move it from one side of the boat to the other, then um, the, you know whatever drag device you have is gonna help you. It's gonna be far less efficient than something that's made purpose made for that, but it, at least you have some hope to steer the boat um, one way or the other. And um, the, uh, 
Yeah, the main thing is like, you know, trying to keep it underwater so that it's it's creating the most drag possible. Now let's talk about getting into motoring with the Drogue, <clears throat> which creates its own sort of complications. Um, and I'm not sure how this would go for a powerboat. Um, I guess if you had like twin screws on a powerboat, it wouldn't matter because you would steer that way. So I guess with a single screw, this, this part of the video might apply. Um, but I found once I was approaching the channel between Oahu and Molokai, the winds died down. I was very nervous about the channel because it's notorious. The winds get very high um, through Venturi effect and the seas stand up into monsters in that channel. I just happened to be lucky enough to come in in the, in the morning. So I started my engine at 4 a.m. and powered as fast as I could, which was just still only about three knots um, to get through that channel before the afternoon winds came in. When I started the engine, obviously I had to like be very careful that the lines didn't get in my prop. They were pretty far aft, but that was a concern. I like double checked everything before I started the engine. And the biggest trick for me was I couldn't get up to really high RPMs with my engine without the prop walk. My prop walk always brings it to port. And so I would have to keep my, um, I kept my drug tied as far tight as I could on the starboard side to try to counter that prop walk. But as it was, the most I could do was like three knots. Um, and even that I had to, eventually I figured out that I could backwind my head sole and that gave me enough pressure pushing on the bow to be able to hold my course. And, uh, and I have a full kill boat, so that might come into play. Like somebody with a fin kill boat, it might be easier. You might be, you might have better success with that, and also you'll be able to get better speed. But that's the thing that that I had to deal with. And then the other thing to think about is that you are dragging a resistance, <laughs> something designed to make create resistance. So it's like driving with the parking brake on. Then you got to think about your fuel consumption. You know, how much fuel do you have? You know, because you're you're going to be burning more fuel dragging this drogue behind the boat so it's all things to kind of think about when you know either beforehand or or even in the moment you're like you know are you gonna are you gonna be able to get in like when do you start using your engine you know what i mean i waited i only motored the last 12 hours of the 32 days at sea so let's talk about chafe that's your biggest enemy in this whole thing um my biggest points of like chafe were where it passed through the eyes of the spinnaker poles and um one good thing about that was that i could visually see it but it did chafe pretty quickly so basically and it chafed mostly i was on a port tack so most of my chafe was um on the port side uh because i had the you know the drug as tied up as i could um depending on the wind wind speeds on the port side like to weather and basically what I would do is I would sit on my aft deck where I was, t I was, I always kept the drogue control lines tied off to like the dock cleats on the aft deck. So I would just sit there and like manually adjust it. And I found that w without using the winch, I could just wait until a wave pushed and it would take all the tension off that drogue and I would take it in. So I wasn't killing myself every time I'm like pulling all of this tension. And then but I would make sure that you could see the chafe on the control line and I would just make sure that the points of chafe, I never landed those back on the spinnaker pole, same spot. So I would always land it right between. So like there's sections of my line that have like all these little marks of chafe where I was landing it in different spots. Um, because uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe if I had had like a, a round file and I could have filed that down, but once you're in an emergency situation underway, I wasn't trying to like, tune the spinnaker pole out at sea <laughs> i was just trying to get in um but yeah there's um and maybe if like if you're thinking about it beforehand you can like set up that system but as i mentioned earlier if i could have omitted the spinnaker pole as an outrigger then i wouldn't have experienced that at all because it would have just gone through the blocks and then aft the other point of chafe that was a concern but only at the very end was right where the control lines attached to the drogue. Now, if I had had my system set up 
beforehand, I definitely would have had a swivel on it and I think that would have eliminated that point of chafe. As I mentioned previously, I have created a simple like user's manual about what worked for me and what you need to set up a system um, that is free to download. You can find that link in the description of the video down below. So I hope this video helps you understand how to set up a drogue steering system, understand how it worked for me, and um, apply it to your vessel to give you yourself peace of mind, a redundancy that'll help you save your crew, your vessel, and yourself in the case of complete steering failure. And I really hope that none of y'all are a thousand miles offshore. <laughs> Hopefully you only have to do this for a day or even an afternoon. But if you find yourself way far away from everything, um, I really hope that the information in this video makes your life a little bit easier. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me in the algorithm. Um, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. And um, if uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell so you don't miss any future episodes. And um, yeah, I, I hope this helped you guys. So thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.